see Jesus stripped of majesty He hangs disfigured on a tree A man of grief by man betrayed Like one from whom we turn away Led like a lamb without a sign In mockery with violence A sacrificial offering Atoning for his people's sin Oh, what amazing love I bow before the cross My pride reduced to dust What amazing my soul, my broken life made whole. See Jesus cold within the grave, cut off from life our lives to save. Welcome, everybody. God bless you all. Today, I'm joining you with a dear brother named John Isaac. We're going to introduce him in just a minute, but I just want to thank everybody for joining us today. And this very, very important topic, we're going to be discussing what's happening in Egypt, churches being burnt down, 
Christians being killed. We really want to get into this. We want to share it with everybody. We want it to spread so that people know exactly what's going on in Egypt, what's happened just this week alone. And then we'll get into the history a little bit as well. Um, but we want to just welcome everybody. And uh, we want to welcome our brother, John Isaac, to the channel. John, thank you so much for joining. God bless you, brother. Uh, peace of Christ with all of you. Uh, God bless you, Brother Jai. Uh, thank you for having me on, on the show. Um, I would like to tell people just uh, one minute about myself. I, uh, I, um, I am Egyptian, but living in the West. Uh, I do ministry for, with Muslims and, and debates with Muslims in Arabic. Actually, most of the debates and discussion uh, uh, were in Arabic. And also in English, but not like the Arabic. I do also um, moderate debates and uh, uh, I have uh, some... Um, show uh, on my channel in Arabic uh, with other Christians. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, you, you might also be familiar with our brother John. He does uh, shows with uh, Eric the Kaffir on the Crossing Crescent as well. Um, but most of the material that he does is in Arabic. We do want to share his channel, though, and we want to... Uh, Bring awareness to anyone in the chat. Uh, I'm sure if you speak Arabic, you know who John is. Uh, if not, this is the channel in the chat there. We'll share it on the screen as well. John is actually uh, involved in a couple of channels on YouTube. This is his channel. So if you uh, want to, oops, I have to just change the banner here. Just give me a minute. Okay. Uh, if you guys could uh, check out his channel, click on the link and subscribe. Even if you don't understand Arabic, it'd be great just to support our brother. We really appreciate that. This is uh, his channel, and you may also see him on another channel, which we'll put on the screen here now. Um, Saeed Abu Mustafa. Uh, you might see John appearing on this channel as well, uh, among other channels, but these are the two that you'll see him on. If you guys want to subscribe and show support, we would really appreciate that. All right, uh, so Brother John, um, what uh, brought us together today was a very unfortunate event, a very tragic event, and this is what we came to talk about. Um, Brother, can you uh, explain what we see on the screen here? What is this? What happened? And let's just begin with our topic now. Yeah, um, actually, uh, um, last week, since uh, Sunday, last Sunday, we have every day, almost every day, uh, a church is burned in Egypt. They say sometimes uh, it's uh, electric fire. Another church, uh, they see uh, the children had candles, and the candles uh, sometimes we don't know. And sometimes it's electric fire and they change their mind by other things. We had through the last week, seven days, we have seven churches. Every day we have a, a church were burned and completely damaged to the earth. Seven churches in just six days. I just yeah. want that to I just want that to sink in. So so let's talk about this first church um on Sunday. What what happened? Uh, there were a lot of casualties, a lot of deaths, and uh, a mm -hmm. lot of people injured as well. Can you talk a little bit about that? We want to share something. Uh, this is very, very tragic, very sad. I just want to show something on the screen here. These are some of the children that were in the church. Yeah. So the church, uh, it was in, 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 in their prayers on Sunday, early morning, about 8.30, 8. And there are uh, many pray, uh, uh, people praying inside the church, and the fire begin. They try to contact, uh, like uh, the firemen, to come to uh, to to stop the fire, but they came after one hour and a half. The whole church, it was like a building for for like uh, four floors. The, the, it's completely damaged, and we have forty one Christians died in this accident. 15 of them were children. Wow. Yeah. 15 were children, just like the children we saw on the screen yeah. here. Yeah. 
these these are two twin yeah i mean two girls twin one twin and a, a young a younger boy, a boy. Oh, man. Yeah. It's we are one family just one family and we want to share some more here as well uh i, I i'm sure you've heard reports of this as well but some uh are some people sharing what what happened you have um fathers who who lost their their children their wives you have uh you have parents who lost their children you have uh uh children who lost their parents lost their siblings this is uh, very tragic very sad and very devastating and also the priest himself of the church died in the accident because he uh, insisted that he will he will leave the last one he he will let the people leave and he will continue to fight and help people but he couldn't uh, survive because of the mono <coughs> monoxide carbon yeah it was the carbon monoxide the yeah yeah <laughs> This is, uh, yeah, uh, so that was very honorable of the priest. He, he, he didn't, he didn't want to leave until everyone left. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, he didn't survive. And what you mentioned that uh, we, we, you see on the screen here that there, there are fire trucks there, there are ambulances. Can you just tell us, um, because there, there, there's the official government you know, report as to what happened. This is the official government statement, and we can get into how long it took them to come with this official statement. But just let's just ask this question first: um, How far away was the fire station from the church? Um, uh, um, the nearest um, fire, fire station uh, for the church it's about three hundred meters, which uh, in time it takes like three minutes to come. Just three minutes. Just yeah, three and. Minutes away. Yeah, there is no need to co to contact them because the fire was going up. Anyone can see it long time, a long long distance away from the church. So they they saw the fire, but they came around an hour and a half after the fire. So the fire, the nearest fire station is about three minutes away, and it took them an hour and a half to get there. Just want to make sure I understood everything. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's that's what happened. Now, the official story, and like you said, brother, that there are some conflicting uh, reports as, or you know, from the government as to what happened. What, what's the current official story as to what happened at this church? Uh, the official story says that it's uh, um, electric fire. And the electric fire um, make, uh, begins in the in the place they, they pray, and goes up to the second floor and the third floor and fourth floor. All okay. these floors were damaged, and people died from the fire itself, from the smoke. Wow, man, it's, it's very very heartbreaking. It's hard to even to talk about this. Uh, it's it's so it's so sad. It's so devastating, and. Let, let's let's talk a little bit about that Let, let's uh let's just say um let's say if this was the only church that has burnt in let's say so many years and it's the only one and maybe there's some credence to their story let's just pretend that that's true what they're saying what if there's a church in egypt that has an issue with the infrastructure or they need to repair something in their church. Let's say that there are building problems. Let's say that there's uh, an issue with electricity or something like that. What kind of things do Christians, what, what do the priests, do the, do the Christians, do the churches need to do in order to fix these things? What, 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 what's the thing that they need to do in order to fix any problem that they might have? Yeah, churches or Christians are not allowed to fix any uh, problem in, in in the churches, like uh, for example, bathroom, uh, like uh, leakage of water in the bathroom. It is not, it is not like a job you can do it uh, in a second. You should um, uh, like uh, requ make a request and go to the city president to ask him a permission. He will say to you, no, no, I can't give you the permission. Then you go to the higher level, the minister of Re religious affairs in Egypt. You tell him well, we need to to fix the the water leakage in the bathroom. He said, "No, I can't give you the permission. Go to the prime minister." Uh, 
and the prime minister go to the president. So just to fix the water leakage in a bathroom and in a church, you should take a permission from the president. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and that's, this, that's may take, this may take two years, three years, something to yeah. get this permission. I, and I, I remember um, some, some years ago, uh, one of the Egyptian presidents uh, actually did give permission for uh, a church to repair their bathroom but he was so embarrassed he had uh, the second in command like the prime minister right he had the, him give the report because it's so imagine you just think about this just everybody in order to even repair a bathroom in the church you need permission from the president of the country that that's how impossible it is for christians to even have proper buildings proper infrastructure proper uh, construction um and expanding the church as well because as you can see the church has many stories on top of it they couldn't expand outwardly because they don't have the permits they don't have the permission so yeah we we, yeah. we, we will not wait for two years to fix leakage and in, in the bathroom we do it through the night because night no one can they can notice what is going on inside the church we can do the renovation through the night quickly quickly and the morning everything is done and that's it because wow. if a Muslim, if a Muslim uh, sees what what is going on the, in the church, he can take like can gather a lot a lot of Muslims and like uh, uh, throw stones on the church or burn it. Because no, it, now it's it's illegal. Again, it's the law. Hmm. There is no permission. He use his hand to to like uh, damage the, 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 the church. Uh, this way so we do it like through the night quickly quickly to fix the problems without any permission otherwise right. wait two three years yeah years for the president to sign off on just fi fixing yeah. a leakage or something so imagine uh if let's just say if there is we're going to get into other uh church churches that are burnt and you know we'll get into the history about that as well but let's just say if this is just one kind of like unique situation where there's you won't have anything else like it in the past or recently and there's some credence to the government story it's still impossible for christians to make the proper repairs or let's say there was an electrical problem these things are impossible to fix because you're one church you need permission from the president himself of the country in order to fix that thing so years and years can go by as brother john said two or three years before the president even looks at the matter and it's not his first priority his first priority of the president of a country is not to okay we need to repair a bathroom in a church or we need to do some electrical outlets in the church so even if there is credence to the official story there are still major 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 problems and it's still the fault of the government uh for for enforcing these insane laws and there's obviously a history behind that right john uh with why they need permission from let's say from the 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 sultan or the caliphate or you know historically speaking yeah, uh, back to yeah. omar back to omar itself says that uh, you can't renovate a, renovate a church so a renovation of a church it now it's like a, a gift from the president yeah wow okay john so so this happened at a particular time in the year and uh there's something significant as to where it happened and uh where and when it happened. So can you give us, um, let's go back to like 2013, around yeah. the same time. Um, can you give us the history? What happened back in 2013? In 2013, we have um, the first time in the history, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, were controlling Egypt. Uh, the president at this time, Mohammed Morsi al Ayat, who was one of the Muslim Brotherhood. And um, there was a lot of demonstration against uh, Muslim Brotherhood from Christians, from liberals, from all, all, uh, all Egyptians against uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood in, at the end of uh, June. And at, at the beginning of July, um, the army made a meeting and they kicked out Morsi al Ayat or Morsi from the presidency of Egypt. And um, they uh, make the like, Muslim at this time, uh, Muslim Brotherhood, they were angry. They made like, uh, they go to a place in uh, Cairo, uh, the capital of Egypt, called Rab al Adawiyya. It's a square, big square. It's called Rab al Adawiyya. And they sit there. Uh, all the time they close the roads 
and they converted this place into like a, um, a fight place. They had their weapons, and no one can go in, uh, inside the Rabah um, al-Adawiyya Square. They should uh, know his name. They should know his religion. No Christians can go through. No people can go to their houses because it's a very big square connecting a lot of roads uh, to it. No one can go. It was headache. They tried, the, 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 the Egyptian army tried um, uh, by speaking with them, with reasoning, but uh, no, no, nothing happened till middle of August, the same time like now, but 2013. At this time, the army uh, began fighting with Muslim Brotherhood inside um, the square of Rabah al adawiyah and they kicked out uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. But after fight, some pe some persons from the army were, were were killed, and many from Muslim Brotherhood were killed. So Muslim Brotherhood wanted to take revenge from the army. What did they do? They attack the churches in Egypt, all over Egypt, from Alexandria till Aswan. The churches, from, this is the retaliation. Churches. Yeah, they burn it the same way we have the burning uh, churches this week. They burn it 93 churches in just a couple of days. 93 churches? Yeah. This is 2013. Yes. After and, the fight between the army and the Muslim Brotherhood and Rabah al mm. Now... Now, obviously, the Christians had nothing to do with this fight. This is between the government, the army, and the Muslim Brotherhood. The Christians were just the ones who were attacked by the Muslim Brotherhood, right? And so what we have now is 93 churches in 2013 being burnt. So we have co people, groups of people coordinating attacks on burning churches, exactly as we see happening now. So uh, let, let's let's go back to, to today. How... Is this is this something that's just unique to uh, something that happened Sunday, or like did it, like did something like this not happen since like 2013, or what happened just this week alone? I mean, you mentioned at the beginning, but I just want to emphasize it again: how many churches this week alone were burnt with the same exact cause that they're saying? So far, seven churches in a seven days. Seven churches in seven days, and and. As you said, that these are conflicting stories. Some will say, "Oh, you know, the, the children were playing with candles," and uh, and then the other ones will say, "Oh, actually, it's the electrical outage." And uh, they're they're kind of like, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about um, how long it takes them to come up with these official reports and stories. How long do they do the investigating with these churches? At least uh, seven days, at least one week, because they, they take the camera. They have, we have inside every church. We have camera. We they go to the camera to, to check uh, its uh, its a file. What what uh, what is uh, saved inside the camera, and make a report and check the fire comes from where. What is the source of the fire? It takes some time, but actually, we see. Uh, after just one hour from the case, before even the, 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 the fire station coming to the, the church, we see uh, like the coming, it's a firework, a fire, um, uh, electric fire. Like Sometimes, that. no, it's a candle. Just one, or a hour. Just one hour. Yeah, it's a, it's wow. a, the, 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 the national TV said that after one hour. Just one hour. Now, yeah, yeah. So, one hour after, um, the the let's say the fire department clears the building right after that one hour later they have an official report from the government that's it just one hour so they're not doing much investigating they're not really searching as to what really happened they're just kind of marking they have like a script that they say and they just go with the script every time right yeah and for example the first church that was on sunday we have rumors that the uh, the door the door in the fourth floor was open which means that someone jump uh, on the fourth floor of the building of the church and go down to till the first floor we we don't know uh, is it real or uh, just rumors we have a lot of uh, questions with no answers and yeah. the biggest question is we are not allowed to make uh, uh, like a renovation in the church. It's not easy. We find the army making the renovation 
uh, on their own, like uh, respond and uh, their own money, just one day after the fire. Why they are making it quickly like that? Right. Uh, I only have uh, one reason that is trying to hide something. They're trying to hide to, something. Yeah. There is no reason for that because the army uh, will not do it just a second day. Why? What is the reason? Why so quickly? Even the investigation didn't finish yet. Why is doing that quickly? So we have a lot of uh, questions with no answers. A lot of questions with no answers. And the government stories are never satisfying answers. When it comes to conducting an investigation uh aren't they uh like painting the walls uh, of of the church within how how fast are they doing this in order like like they're they're immediately saying that this is an electrical problem and then what are they doing after that um in order to kind of what they say is precautions or whatever but what what do they do after that after they declare this uh, what they did the second day, they said that uh, the police makes an investigation and it's uh, electric fire, it's confirmed. And uh, one day after, we found the army is going to the church to, to make the paint on Tuesday. The church was burned on Sunday morning and Tuesday early morning they begin renovation, which is uh, uh, unbelievable. Wow. Okay. So like a day and a half or so have passed and they've come to their conclusions and now they're painting over everything they're cleaning the scene which makes it impossible for any independent investigation to to happen right yeah no way you are hiding something yeah sure well brother this is uh this is seven churches in seven days we can go back to 2013 93 churches in a number of days and it seems like this is a something that happens uh, often and it's something that's consistent uh, it's too much of there's not it's not a coincidence now let me ask you this uh brother um for people who say that uh, all the temperatures are really high in Egypt and right now during this time of the year and, you know, a lot of people are using their uh, the AC units and the, the generators. And if that's uh, true, uh, if what they're saying is true and that this is just kind of just what the government is saying is happening is happening. Do we have any reports of mosques that are that are burnt in the same way? Because not all mosques uh, have the government regulations for how they're built, right? That sometimes they just build a mosque without having the permits or anything like that. So it's not really built properly. So do we have any mosques that are being burnt down the same way? Zero, nothing, nothing at all. Not there is no single, single, nothing. Not a single mosque. That should definitely raise some flags. Not a single mosque is being burnt down in the same way that all these churches are being burnt down in. Okay, uh, so Brother John, uh, what else can you tell us about um, the treatment of Christians in Egypt in general? So beyond just what's happening uh, right now in this week, um, we had on this channel, Sister Hatoon had uh, the brother of uh, Father um, Arsanios, um, who was martyred. Maybe you can talk a little bit about um, about him and then other priests who have been uh, killed and martyred and other Christians as well. Like, let's just talk a little bit about the, the treatment of Christians in general uh, yeah. in Egypt. Uh, first of all, let us speak about the priest, the priest uh, in Egypt. The priest in Egypt, uh, mostly uh, Orthodox, they wear black clothes with big, like a big cross on their chest. So even you are far from the, the, the priest in Egypt, you can know he is a priest from his shape outside, the, 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 the shape from outside. Okay, not like um, uh, like uh, for example the Protestants they can wear any clothes. No, they have their own clothes. We know their shape. Right. Well. They're very noticeable. They yeah. Stick out. yeah, yeah. Um, on um, last April, on seventh of April, exactly, um, um, in a church in Alexandria, 
and we had they had a meeting uh, between the father or the priest whose, whose father Arsenius and he's like uh, um, he's like uh, some of uh, servants with him they went to the to the uh, to the beach and they were sitting together praying opening the gospel reading the gospel they finished it was at the days of Ramadan and the street was empty because it uh, when uh, when Muslims go uh, do um, uh, eat after the fasting. Uh, all people go to their houses. They eat inside the houses. No one goes to the street. So they are crossing the street. Then a Muslim Salafist came with a knife and uh, uh, attacked Father Arsenius three times in his neck. So he died immediately, just a few minutes, and he died before going to the um, to the hospital. He died. Uh, they, 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 they caught the guy and they made investigation in the police with him. The first investigation, he said, he, when he saw Father Arsenius, he was irritated. He felt that uh, he should kill this kafir. Okay? In the second investigation by the police, he said that he is a mentally retarded person. So... First one, he said he killed him because he is a kafir. Second one, he said, uh, no, I am a mentally retarded person, uh, just as the lawyers told him, told him, uh, says that. So we have another example of these conflicting reports, just like with the churches. Sometimes they say, oh, the children were playing with candles, and then they lit the church on fire. And then immediately afterwards, they'll say, oh, actually, it was an electrical issue. Same thing here. They're saying he saw um, someone who was a disbeliever, an infidel, and he was enraged. And then all of a sudden, now they're saying, oh, he has uh, mental issues. So two different you know, reasons for why he did it. Two different reports. Yeah. And the family, Father Arsenius didn't let that uh, go. They made a lot of pressure and through the media here and there. And all Christians made a lot of pressure because it was a big case in Egypt uh, um, um, these days. And finally, the the police um, forward the, the investigation to the court. And the court decided to make capital punishment for the attacker. <clears throat> but but what, what, cause, what, did, what, what was the cause? Uh, that this attacker attacked uh, Father, Father Arsenius and killed him. The only reason that he was like um, irritated was not was angry from seeing a Christian in front of his face. But he can't be a mentally retarded person because Father Arsenius was with about twenty or thirty Christ other Christians. He chose Father Arsenius because he knows that he is Christian hundred percent. Right, he's wearing the black, yeah, the black clothes, the cross, the big cross on on his chest. So he is a Christian, and he killed him. Okay, so this is uh, another common thing that we're going to see. There's a script that the government will give whenever there's a Christian that's killed, whenever we have uh, Christians being attacked that the attacker is someone who's mentally deranged or they're mentally ill. Um, and uh, before we get into other examples, let's just give another sort of category here. Um, when we have examples of uh, Christian women, Christian young women who are being kidnapped, and uh, we can get into the details of what happens to them, um, one of their official scripts with that right away is, oh, she left on her own. She she did it by herself. Like So they have like a script for everything. Whenever the Christians are attacked, whenever they're kidnapped, there's always an official script. Whenever there's a church burnt, there's always an official script. So why don't you give us maybe an example of uh, a Christian girl who was kidnapped? Um, what do they do to the Christian girl? And what do they, what's the official report say versus the reality of the situation? Yeah, kidnapping um, um, <clears throat> Christian girls is um, is ha ha happening every week. We have a, a week every week have a, at least one case, and they are, they are all um, at, um, maybe less than eighteen, not adult. They are children. They considered by the law of Egypt, they are children, and they can't convert to Islam because of the law. They should wait till eighteen. They converted to Islam. We finally we find a, a, a girl. Uh, we know we know this girl well. She goes to uh, she she goes to she goes to the church. She prays every day. She is a good servant of of, of Jesus. And suddenly she disappeared. After two or three weeks, we found a, a video on YouTube. She is saying that she converted to Islam and showing the the certificate of Islam in her hand. 
And when we go to the police and ask what happening, what what happened, uh, no, she converted in her own. Some cases, uh, after pressure, we, we return them back to their family. And they sp speak and tell us that like um, uh, a group of men attack her, maybe they raped her, and they force her to convert to Islam or show their naked pictures to, in the media. So they convert to Islam just because they are shy from what will happen to them. And this right. is almost every case. So there's manipulation, there's blackmail, there's threats that's going on. Like you said, in many cases, these are, these are legally their, their children and they're being kidnapped by, you know, adults, men who are, you know, very scary and they're threatening them, they're manipulating them. And so they're forcing them to do certain things. Now, the government, doesn't the government often report that the, the, that the girls, they kind of run away on their own by their own free will? It's like they're not kidnappings. They're just kind of, they're just going away. So I guess what I'm trying to kind of present here is whenever something happens to Christians, there's always a script that the government says, a church uh, burns down, that's an electrical fire. A Christian is killed, oh, he's uh, mentally deranged. He's not doing it because he's a Muslim. He's not doing it because he's part of the Muslim Brotherhood or some other Muslim group, but he's just mentally deranged. Uh, a girl gets kidnapped, oh, she's unhappy with her life and she, you know, or she wants to convert to Islam or something. Is that accurate, John? Yeah, it's true. This is what we see uh, every day. And there is another case I'd like to tell, maybe you will hear for the first time in Elmenia. Elmenia, it's in Upper Egypt. And um, there was like a man, a Christian man, had a relationship with a, a Muslim girl. It's a big problem. A Muslim girl to have a, a relationship with a Christian man, it's a very, very, very big problem. What what is the reaction of Muslims? They go to his 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 house, they burn his house, and they drag his mother, old old mother, about 65 years old, and they took off took off all her clothes and let her, her move in the street without clothes. And this happened like four or five years ago. It's wow. a disaster. Disaster. And what happened? They forced the, the woman to say no. Uh, this didn't happen to her to save her, to save her a son, because they attack her son and they they will kill him. So to save her son, said no. They, uh, I, not, nothing happened to me. They didn't take my clothes off, and nothing happened. And it's a big dis disaster. Wow, that's tragic. Uh, very. I'm sure a lot of for um, a lot of our viewers, maybe this is your first time hearing a lot of this, uh, the treatment of Christians in Egypt and some of the specific examples. Uh, we wanted to do this to shed light on what's happening in Egypt, what's happening on the ground. And we want uh, to have awareness in our Christian communities and the English speaking world and wherever we can spread this information. Uh, we want uh just to raise awareness and uh, for everybody um, who's a Christian, we, we want you to just know about this so you can know maybe how a, a little bit better for how to pray for your brothers and sisters in the Middle, Middle East and other parts of the world where there, there's very bad persecution. And uh, for the non-Christians uh, that are watching this, we, we also want you to learn about this as well. Uh, this is what happens uh, to the followers of Jesus and ask yourself why this happens to the followers of Jesus specifically. And uh, we want uh, this to be kind of informational for everybody and hopefully everybody can, can benefit and learn. Um, but specifically for our brothers and sisters and the Lord, we want um, everyone to pray for everybody in Egypt, all of our brothers and sisters and other parts of the Middle East, um, Africa and other parts of the world where there's uh, this severe persecution. So, uh, so brother John, um, could you uh, maybe just by way of uh, sort of summarizing any sort of thoughts about uh, anything that we talked about today, just kind of anything that you want to share on your heart for uh, summary or any new things you want to bring out just from yourself that you'd like to share. And then we'll kind of let you get uh, get this out and then we'll, we'll wrap up from there. 
um, uh, like a summary, we have uh, like a persecution against uh, Christians in, on a um, regular basis. Uh, killing priests is not, uh, Father Sinus was not the first case. We have last year, Father Sam'an was killed the same way. And every year we have two, three cases like that. Even in Sinai, we, we, they killed uh, uh, diacon uh, 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 or Christian uh, believer because he is going to church much. They saw him going to church every day, pray every day. They kill him. This is the reason. Just he is a good believer over the Christ. So uh, killing Christians is, is happening on a regular basis. Kidnapping um, uh, young girls. Uh, not adult, young girls, and converting to Islam to Islam is happening once every week. Uh, you can't build a church. It's uh, like a miracle to build a church. You, you can't make a renovation in a church. If you'd like to make a renovation, do it fast, quickly in the night, and no one knows. If someone knows, they will burn the church all over the church. Uh, we, we had... Uh, um, strange fires in, 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 in many churches, seven churches in seven days, which never happened. It, it has nothing to do with the weather because some churches were burned in, through the, the night and uh, it was empty. So there is no electric fire while the church is empty. They, they are not using lights. They are not, you are not using air conditioner or anything. It's just uh, it's closed, the church is closed and uh, no persons inside and it was burned. So we don't know the reason. We have no choice because the government is not allowing us to, 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 to make them our investigation. So we, we say, uh, Lord, have mercy. Please, Lord, stop it and uh, give us uh, uh, like patience to, to, to force this uh, uh, bad things and that's it uh, thank you brother uh if if we have any uh, viewers who might not be christians let's say we have uh, muslims maybe they're interested in the title can you brother just uh present um a gospel message of uh you know what someone needs to do in order to be saved we let's say there's a muslim listening or an unbeliever listening maybe you can just give uh, a gospel presentation, and then we'll uh, end with that, brother. Yeah, the gospel teaches us um, uh, to be saved, that is to believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, and uh, to follow his teaching. His teaching means uh, to, to love your enemies, to pray for them, to to live in peace with all other people, to live to to, to love others as you love yourself, uh, not to take revenge. Don't stop uh, evil by evil, but stop the evil with 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 good thing. Um, and um, if you follow Jesus, if anyone follows Jesus, if the world follow what Jesus says, there is no war, there is no killing. It will be a good life, like we live. We lived we, Adam and Eve, were with uh, with God in, in heaven. Uh, so um, I I pray that uh, all Muslims or non-believers uh, in general uh, may God touch their uh, hearts and know that there is no God except Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and uh, believe in Him. Believe in what the Bible says. No, no salvation except through Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, brother. And I just want to echo that. We we really urge everyone who's watching who is not a Christian to repent and to believe in Jesus. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, brother John. Uh, thank you so much uh, to all of our viewers. Thank you to all of our moderators for serving us. And I just uh, would urge you all to please uh, share this information with your communities, with your churches, maybe with your priests, with your pastors. Uh, we really just want the information to get out there because it's it's the body of Christ. No matter where you live in the world, no matter what language you speak, um, these are your brothers and sisters in Egypt, and we just want to bring it to your attention and to the attention of uh, your Christian communities so that you can pray uh, better for uh, your brothers and sisters. And so thank you so much, everybody. Uh, we're going to end it now. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks again. God bless everybody.